most of their infrastructure was built by the American dollar and fueled by American greed. And we were feeding this beast for 50, 60 fucking years. Slowly, we have been eroded by this. And now, I hope it doesn't happen, but in my gut's telling me it will. At some point, we're going to have an altercation with them. And it probably is not going to go well for either of us. Hello everybody, Terrence Pop here with another episode of Live from the Lair. And uh, you guys are going to have to bear with me. Uh, I threw my shoulder and elbow out on the heavy bag yesterday and I'm in a uh, pretty great deal of pain so I can't write on the board with my right arm and I'm going to just go over some uh, comments and questions I've gotten past emails and uh, comments on the videos. All right, so number one. Why have you started covering politics? We want just men content. That was a lie. <laughs> a lot of you guys out there started off with Redonkulous and uh, we were doing the MGTOW red pill thing. We're still MGTOW red pill. All right, we still cover a lot of the men's shit. But in reality, we have some crazy shit going on here in America. The way I see it, the media has betrayed the people of this country, is lying. Just, they're not even doing propaganda anymore. They're just flat out lying. The liberals and their twist on everything, even if they aren't lying or doing propaganda, is skewed to the left. There really isn't a lot of people on the right, you know, or in the middle, just giving, you know, their opinion of what's going on. And I think I have a lot to offer in regards to a military mindset uh, to the things that are taking place. For instance, this whole BLM and Antifa thing, it's basically following right along the steps needed to a full-blown civil war or conflict of some type. You can call it whatever you want. That's what's going on. All right, number two here. Uh, what has been your perspective on the Me Too movement? There's been a lot of bitching, moaning, and complaining out there from women who don't uh, get the mentoring that they used to get from men, um, are getting cut out of uh, you know events and meetings and so forth uh, by men, uh, and not really being hired for certain jobs, uh, you know, because of their women. <clears throat> now, you can't, by law, discriminate against a female for any reason. With that being said, when somebody has the power to point their finger at you and say, he did this and this, this, even if it's 30 fucking years old and that dude's career is ruined, how eager do you think the men around that have seen that example are to just say, oh, yeah, sure, yeah, well, hey, we'll do everything. No, it's not going to work out. All right. Now, I personally don't blame any men out there who just say, fuck it. I'm not working with women. I don't, women, I don't want women in my fucking office. Okay, I'm not going to do any meetings, any dinners, or any social events. Fuck that. I just want to focus on my career. The hell with that horseshit. Now, I actually ran into some of this bullshit back when I was on active duty. And uh, the only reason that I didn't get run out on a rail is I had installed into my office a basic, is basically a, a hidden camera in a clock radio. Uh, with audio. So when people would come into my office, I would either state the date or on the back wall, I always made a habit of writing to the day's date on the dry erase board. So I, I hung dry erase boards up all in my office because that's just how I operate. So they would be talking to me and then right behind them is the date on the board. <clears throat> well, I had a uh, first lieutenant, you know, make some accusations in regards to some shit I said, or I actually didn't say it, but 
you know, she wrote up her statement. It took place in my office on such and such day. Uh, they, they called me in to give me a counseling and to basically, you know, that's the, the first step of, of rolling the fucking rock down the hill to crush your career. So, you know, I discover, you know, when they, they tell me what's going on, I'm like, hey, hold on. And I remember the colonel's like, no, no, we're going to do this now. I go, you know what? Fuck this. I'll be right back. So I go back and download the uh, images onto a CD. And I, I walk back in there, pop it into the uh, laptop that's on the table. And I show the exact incident with the date and time that's on her witness statement. And I'm like, this is complete bullshit. So now they're like, oh yeah. So they try to sweep the whole thing under the table. Pop doesn't play that game. You step onto the mat with some administrative violence with the popster. Well, you're going to get your money's worth. So, I mean, I didn't fuck around. I elevated that fucking shit all the way to the Department of Defense. It came down to the Department of the Army. And then it comes down through all of the IGs in between. So everyone has visibility on it. And uh, that uh, lieutenant that made those accusations got reassigned somewhere else. What happened there? I fucking don't even know nor care. But that uh, incident kicked off a huge fucking problem with this uh, female lieutenant colonel who I called Dina that uh, eventually winded up with her getting two dozen IG complaints. Uh, then she got, you know, she fucked up, moved up. Uh, and she held her colonel, full bird colonel, for like 13 months, and then everything caught up to her, and they just said, fucking get out of here. All right, so, you know, in regards to the Me Too thing, um, I have personal experience. Uh, I don't blame men for distancing themselves from the craziness that, that's taken place. I can't even move that fucking... That's taken place out there in the real world today, okay? And women are suffering for it, and they did it to them fucking selves. Okay, now this one here is, are you aware that the USA is responsible for the juggernaut that China has become? Well, that's a very deep question. I could talk on this subject for probably a good 10 or 20 minutes. I'm going to try not to do that here. In the late 60s, China had very few big cities. Uh, they didn't really have a lot of infrastructure nor, nor highways. Uh, they had some. Uh, they were basically 90% uh, rural and they did farming and so forth. They made a decision that, hey, we have all of this people here and we can pay them peanuts. Start with Carter uh, allowed um, companies to outsource jobs to China and it just blew up from there. And the reason China is how they are today, most of their infrastructure was built by the American dollar and fueled by American greed. And we were feeding this beast for 50, 60 fucking years. Slowly, we have been eroded by this. And now, looks like, I hope it doesn't happen, but in my gut's telling me it will. At some point, we're going to have an altercation with them. And it probably is not going to go well for either of us. Do you still support the MRA community? Yes, I do. All right, I will probably wind up being a men's rights activist and a MGTOW red pill guy for the rest of my life. The shit that goes on in those courtrooms and the blatant, the blatant discrimination against men is something that did not sit well with me when it, uh, when it happened to me directly. I still talk to guys who are just getting wrecked by the system all the time because uh, it is my intent to basically keep as many of them from putting a gun in their mouth as I can. Uh, using comedy and uh, reason uh, to basically rewrite their brain pans and try to help them out of the terrible slump they're in. Uh, you know, it is what it is. I'm not successful 100% of the time. But at least I'm trying. And there really isn't anyone else out there doing comedy to keep people from committing suicide. That's just me. What do I know? Are you sick of where Holly Weird is headed? Yeah!
Do you prefer movies with actual stories and characters instead of political axe grinding? The hatred and the division and blah blah blah, and I don't want to see it anymore. Well, then help support a group of filmmakers who stay true to free speech no matter what. You have the right to say whatever the f*** you want. Not So Sane Entertainment has been a proud sponsor of Redoculus.com for years, and they will never apologize for anything. Welfare is bullshit. Because if this is art, this is a masterpiece. Winning, no! Gain access to every film in their catalog at NotSoSane.com today, and use the coupon code POP2020 to get 10% off. Links are in the description. Don't, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> uh, what is your take on what the Democrats are doing? Okay, as a tactical thinker, what the Democrats are doing is basically uh, allowing there to be two sides, two distinct sides in the upcoming conflict. Now, historically, for an insurgency to win they have to hold ground. So the Democrats, either consciously or unconsciously, are turning a lot of the major cities and states into solid blue Democrat or socialist or communist you know, areas. And uh, once that happens, you know, then they can try to get international recognition, which I'm sure NATO will not have a problem doing. And that opens the door for other powers outside the country to come in here and get involved, which we don't want. That's my take on basically what the Democrats are doing. So take it with a grain of salt, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. What is your take on the riots and what do you think is the root cause? All right. Now, first of all, they are riots. They've been riots from the very beginning. Now, do I believe there were people that showed up to these so-called riots with the intent to protest peacefully? Yes. Yes, I do. But the way it works is they call for a protest. A bunch of people show up. A smaller amount of individuals show up to hide among the crowd and the protesters to do nefarious shit. Like blind people with lasers you know, uh, throw you know, firework mortars, pepper spray, bombs, you know, well, wrist rockets and pellet guns, the whole works, okay? And, and it's going to just keep escalating. But, I mean, to be honest, once that happens, it's no longer a peaceful protest. It needs to be quelled. The root cause of the riots. There's two of them. Number one, idle hands get into trouble. And like I said earlier in regards to China, we've been shipping our jobs over there for 50, 60 goddamn years. So, you have a lot of people who are unemployed or underemployed and not making a living wage because the jobs that provided those living wages are now in China and some dude's doing them for pennies on the dollar, which is impossible to compete with. That's number one. But to bring the jobs back, and try to correct 60 years of mismanagement from the, uh, the government of this country, uh, which in my, I believe it was all rooted in corruption. They're all paid off all the way to from Carter all the way down. And the second one is this. We have a constitution of the United States. But the way it's been working out lately in the past 50 years is they've slowly eroded the protections that that Constitution provides to each and every U.S. citizen. You have a thing called qualified immunity. You know, you have the cops, the judges, the lawmakers, individuals for friend of the court or anyone working for the court to do whatever the fuck they want without any repercussions whatsoever. That is complete bullshit. There needs to be something put in place that if a judge violates your constitutional rights, you can challenge to have him removed from the bench uh, or be able to sue him for monetary damages. Same thing all the way down, all right? If they're passing laws or doing bullshit to you that violates your constitutional rights, you should have the ability to take them to court 
and you know sue for compensation because historically when people do not get satisfaction in the courts well they look for it on the street and that's what we're getting and it's going to get a lot worse if shit doesn't change all right so somebody's asked me how often do i go shooting i try to go like well, lately it's been a lot more but once a week typically if i'm not doing you know anything or i'm very busy uh i will do twice a year uh, every six months uh i do a i, I qual uh, i qualify myself you know because you know i'm not in any organization anymore but uh, I get up to speed on the pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun at a minimum twice a year. All right, now with the pistol, you know, I probably go through 200 rounds from three feet to like 30 feet, and then I'll do a few, you know, shots at 50 feet. And uh, I'm just aiming for man sized silhouettes. Uh, the rifle, uh, I will zero at 25, uh, take it out to 100 to fine tune it. And then I march it out to 300, leave it at 300, and then I figure out how to do Kentucky windage at like 400 and 500, which with the 223 gets pretty difficult, but it is what it is. Uh, out to 300, 350, 556, we'll eat your lunch. Uh, 12 gauge is very similar, uh, you know, to the pistol, uh, except for a 12 gauge, since those rounds are a lot more expensive, uh, I'll probably just go through 50 rounds of double odd buck shot and maybe 10 rounds of slugs. Somebody sent this one out, and uh, the reason I'm gonna talk about this question is this is a symptom of something that's you know coming down the pipe that's very bad. What is your take on the prosecutor tampering with the evidence of the Mikulskis in St. Louis, i.e. the pistol, and the blatant violation of their constitutional rights? So if you're not familiar with this, this is the lawyer couple that was in a private drive and a mob of individuals walked by, they came out of their house with a rifle and a pistol. Uh, the prosecutor decided they're gonna charge them even though they're well within their rights because that state is a castle doctrine state. Uh, and they could have actually come out and started shooting people and probably would have been able to get away with it if you had a non-biased prosecutor. So the police come, confiscate the weapons, which is a violation of constitutional rights, uh, charges them, and then um, the pistol that was turned in was not functional because it was used as a prop, meaning that the firing pin and the spring were turned around so it was impossible to fire. And the prosecutor ordered that the pistol be disassembled and reassembled so it's functional, and then they issue a statement that that was uh, a weapon capable of uh, conducting or issuing deadly force. Well, it wouldn't unless you threw it somebody's head at, like, fucking three feet. But, you know, that's just me. Yeah, you're going to see a lot more of that. And, like I said before, if you don't get justice in the courts, you're going to get it on the street. All right, now, quite frankly, I have no idea why there isn't a crowd of individuals in front of her house raising fucking hell uh, for what she just did. All right, now, mark my words, you know, I'm, I'm telling you right now that uh, if it gets bad, you're going to see a lot of people popping judges and, you know, taking it out on their families. Um, I am not a fan of that. Well, let me, re let me readdress it. I am not a fan of targeting innocent people. But since I have been, I've been wronged in family court so egregiously and deliberately, that if they storm those courts and those judges' houses, I will not lift a motherfucking finger to stop them, okay? Because as far as I'm concerned, they've lit the fuse on this bomb and it's been burning for a long time and you get what you get. All right, uh, sorry I didn't have a better subject on the board. I'm kind of injured and, you know, it is what it is. But let me know if you guys like me answering your questions. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll talk to you later.